welcome to the ever increasing word feast eric Havwede is my name i'm going to share with you the word of god which is going to come from the book of um second timothy chapter 3 verse 14 up to 17. the bible says but you must continue in the things which you have learned and have been assured of knowing from whom you have learned them so there is a need of you continuing in the things that we are teaching you because there will come other people who shall teach you other things which will be contrary from what we are teaching you. So Paul was adv- uh, advising people to say, or rather he was admonishing Timothy, his son in faith, saying, you must continue in these things that we are teaching you or that I am teaching you. And then 15 says, and that from a child you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in christ jesus meaning scriptures are not complicated even a child can know them and he's saying the scriptures which you have learned this is the area where they profit you and 16 says all scripture is given by inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for collection, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of good may be complete, totally equipped for every good way. So, scriptures they profit you in this area. Number one, scriptures they are given to us by the inspiration of God and are not for the perfection. What point is the scriptures called Babasha? And Babasha here means in the way of doctrine, instruction in righteousness. When you are equipped with the scriptures, the Bible says that you become equipped, you become thoroughly furnished unto all what good works. And then it says they are given for our reproof. The word reproof is a Greek word called elegokos. And elegokos means something that is tested and is proven. Meaning, scriptures you can rely on them. Why? Because they are tested and are proven. Do not rely on your dreams. Do not rely on your circumstances. Do not rely on any other thing but rely on scriptures. Why? Because scriptures are proven and proven. Do not even rely on somebody's testimony. Just because you heard somebody fasted for 100 days and miracle came to them, even you are supposed to fast for 100 days. No, it does not work out like that. Believe in what scripture says. Let what scripture says be the final authority in your life. And when you rely in scriptures, when you trust in scripture, see, it is not scriptures which change to suit situation, no. It is a situation that changes to suit scripture. Therefore, whatsoever you are going through today, whatsoever you are passing through today, don't let it change your focus on the scriptures because scriptures will remain the same the way they are. And whatsoever scriptures never meant when they were being written, they will never mean now. Scriptures always mean what they were what they meant when they were being written. So, rely on scriptures. Let scriptures be your final authority. Whatsoever the thing that is happening in your life, as long as it does not agree with the word of God, as long as it does not agree with the scriptures, don't go for it. If scripture says you are healed, no matter the pain you are feeling in your body, it doesn't change the fact or it doesn't mean it doesn't change the truth. Which scripture says to say, by his stripes you are healed. You see, the Bible says Jesus is the truth. is the way, the truth, and the life. He is not the fact, but he is the truth. There is what we call the fact, and there is what we call the truth. The fact is lesser truth. The fact is lesser truth. The truth is that you are healed. But the fact is that you have a headache. The truth is that you are rich. The fact is that you don't have money right now with you. 
But if you relay or if you stay focused on the truth of the word of God, the fact shall be collected. As you keep on confessing the word of God in your life, saying, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I am healed. That headache which you are feeling shall be collected by the truth of the word of God. So, relay on the word of God. Relay on the truth of the word of God. What comes your way is the fact, but the truth is too constant in the word of God. I am going to go to the book of uh, Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. I'll start from 16. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16. The Bible says, This was the prayer of Apostle Paul for the church. He said, Do, um, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The prayer of Apostle Paul for the church was that God may give the church the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. In the knowledge of him. Not in the knowledge of biology. Not in the knowledge of science. Not in the knowledge of how many enemies are after your life. But his prayer was that the so that God may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ. In the knowledge of Christ. Now, hear what the proceeding verse says concerning this knowledge of Christ. Verse 18 says, The eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance. Now, I'm interested in this one. That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, be enlightened, that you may know, that you may know. Friends, you need to know something. You need to know something. When Christ died, he gave you all that you need. You are not in need. You are not a poor person. Why? Because his divine power has provided or has given unto you already all things that pertains to life and godliness. So that which God has given you already, that's what Paul was praying for, that you may know, that you may realize. Paul was praying that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know that you are not poor, that you may know that you are not in need, that you may know that you cannot be possessed by demons. Why? Because you have Christ in you. That you may know that everything that you need has been supplied. That you may know that you cannot carry a generation of cases. That you may know that you don't have ancestral spirit. That you may know that in you all is there is one God. That's why the Bible says in the book of Philemon chapter 1 verse 6 says that the communication of your faith be effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. Meaning in you, all is there in you is every good thing. Or is there in it is every good thing so that good thing it becomes effectual when you recognize the good thing that is in you that's why friend today i've taken time to share with you what is inside you to say you are not a poor person to share with you that you are not in need to share with you that you are you don't have demons in you recognize the good thing that is inside you and when you recognize the good thing that is inside you they manifest on the outside. They manifest on the outside. People who've got the mentality of saying, me, I have demons in you, or me, I'm under a generation, okay? That's why things are not moving well with me. They are the casualty. They are the victim of Satan possessing them. They are the victim of Satan suppressing them to non-entity. But the mission of the word of God is to make you realize what you have. So the prayer of Apostle Paul for the church was that the church may realize what Christ has done for them is that the church may realize that they are not poor. Is that the church may realize that they are not in need. So, I'm here letting you know to say, you have Christ in you. You have in Christ in you, you are not poor. You have in Christ in you, you cannot go to hell. You have in Christ in you, you already made heaven, so to say. The Bible says, we are raised up with Jesus. We are seated in the heavenly place with him. We are in heavenly places. So you've already made heaven. 
heaven is not a prayer point. You having Christ inside you, you already made heaven. Therefore, I want to pray for you, saying that this word which I've shared with you, let it go a long way with you. Let it be multiplied in you by revelation. Close your eyes wherever you are. I pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I pray for all the viewers all over the world, whosoever is under the sound of my voice, may you realize, let your eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know, that you may know, that you may know what Christ has provided for you, that you may know that you are not in need. Therefore, I pray that let grace be multiplied in your life. It is through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for you. Amen and amen.